Celtic world has more than its share of the supernatural, legends, and myth, which sometimes cross the line into reality. I tell those tales here on Dark Celtic History. <laughs> Ghost of Glencoe. Murder, massacre, betrayal, and treason. Glencoe is one of the most spectacular areas of unspoiled wilderness in Scotland. There is a haunting quality about the moor-clad mountains that stand as sentinels over the eight-mile-long glen which runs from east to west along the northern border of Argyle. And there are those who say that the glen is haunted, for this is the Glen of Weeping, the site of one of the greatest atrocities in Scottish history. Even at the best of times, Scotland has a grim and dark history. Murder has always been considered the foulest of crimes in Scots law. But in the Highlands, with its strict code of hospitality, there is a more heinous crime. It is called murder under trust. That is why the massacre of Glencoe has reverberated so strong throughout the ages. Those MacDonalds had taken in the regiment of British soldiers, most, mostly Clan Campbell, and given them shelter, food, and friendship. And this is why the spirits of the slain MacDonald clansmen are said to return to the Glen of Weeping from time to time, but especially every year on the anniversary of that fateful day, the 13th of February, 1692. Now winter is the time to visit Glencoe in its ghostly grandeur. The low-lying sun makes the mountains appear in their starkest and most forbidding. Shifting mists create an eerie, otherworldly quality to the landscape. However, early in the morning of that 13th of February, the anniversary of the massacre, the melancholy presence of the murdered McDonald's is felt most keenly. On this day, people have claimed to have glimpsed ghostly shadows of the fugitive clansmen crouching among the crags. Some have even claimed to see the massacre reenacted or to have heard the plaintive cries of those who perished. One unlucky distant relative of John Dalrymple, who had taken shelter in a carriage that had broken a wheel in the middle of the glen on its way to Fort William, is said that in the darkest of the night he could hear wails in the distance, and he was tormented by the ghost of those slain, killed because of the order sent by his distant relative all those years ago. That frightful night haunted the man, eventually driving him insane before taking his own life by hanging. The wailing is eerily reminiscent, and it is said that the atrocity could have been even more extensive were it not that the Koenig of the McDonald's was heard wailing on the eve of the Glencoe Massacre. Hearing her cries, some of the clan members took warning and fled into the mountains. In Celtic mythology, the, the Koenig is invisible to the human eye. Her presence is revealed by her heart-stopping wails. She will be heard crying in a waterfall on the night before calamity overtakes her clan. Now, for 300 years, the, the Nine of Diamonds which is kind of an odd thing to talk about, but the Nine of Diamonds is a deck of, in a deck of playing cards has been known as the Curse of Scotland. A number of stories have been proposed to account for this, but perhaps the most persuasive is that the family crest of the Dalrymples of Stair contains nine diamonds. The Englishman responsible for the orders to massacre the McDonald's was named John Dalrymple, Master of Stair. Stair's last political action, though, was in the debate over Article 22 of the Act of Union concerning Scottish representation in the Unified Parliament. Article 22 provided for Scotland to be represented in the new Parliament of Great Britain by 16 of its peers and 45 members of the House of Commons. It provided for Scotland's peers to have the same rights as English peers in any trial of peers. Many believe that this is a half-hearted effort on his behalf to make some sort of amends for what he know he'd done. The uh, guilt was just too much for him. And since he never really received any punishment for his atrocities, it is also said that by numerous servants of his that a mysterious wailing could be heard for two nights after the 7th of January 1707 when the approval of the Act of Union was made. And he was found dead just two days later in his lodgings allegedly of a 
apoplexy.